The 1 o'clock game for the Orioles doesn't start till after 6. Corbin Burns doesn't pitch his best, but does it still lead to an Orioles win? Let's discuss. back into the Birdland Network, folks, where we talk all things Orioles and baseball in the final game of the series between the Orioles and the Royals. Game six of the season starts off kind of weird as they've been having major weather in the Baltimore area. So the game was supposed to start at one o'clock, doesn't start till after six. So we're looking at an over five hour rain delay. And I think the big reason is because they really wanted to get this game in. This is the last time this year that Kansas City is in town. First and last time. And uh, they wanted to make sure they got this game in as best they could. So finally, they do get the game started. And um, Corbin Burns on the mound for the Orioles. And he was... Uh, we'll talk about him in a, in, a, in a few minutes. And Reagans was on the mound for Kansas City. Got to give credit to Reagans. He really pitched pretty well. All in all, against the O's, he went. Geez, I think he went six and a third innings, only gave up the one hit, two walks, seven strikeouts. And Kansas City, he left with a three nothing lead at the time. He was just rolling. The Orioles the bats again. We'll get back to Corbin Burns in a minute, but the Orioles bats again, kind of silent in this game until late. The first six hitters in the lineup, I think between them, had three hits. Two from Rutschman and I think one from Anthony Santander. And even Anthony's hit was in the ninth inning um, before that happened. So the offense has been sputtering a little bit. And uh, they need to do something to hopefully kickstart that. Hopefully they'll be able to do that with the next series. But Burns, five and two-thirds, gave up nine hits, no walks, which was really nice. Two earned runs and three strikeouts. So he wasn't as dominant as he was on opening day. I think the weather may have had something to do with that. The delay, a five-hour delay, may have had something to do with that. But either way, what he did do, he kept us in the game. He kept us in the game. He didn't have that one fail inning, as I like to call it, where he just gets lit up, four runs, five runs, six, seven hits, and then all of a sudden he's out of the game, and this game's over. He didn't do that. He kept them in the game. He just gave up the two runs. He battled the entire time, and he kept them in it. And that was fantastic. And then late, the Orioles are down 3 0 into the eighth inning. They get a couple runs in the eighth inning, a um, couple of hits, a couple of walks. Uh, Gunnar Henderson with a sacrifice fly. So even though he didn't get a hit, he did have you know, a productive at bat in the, the, into the fact that he got us a run in the eighth inning to make it 3 1. And then Adley Rutschman comes up, gets a base hit to make it 3 2, but he gets thrown out heading to second base, trying to stretch a single into a double. And actually, it was just a really nice play by Kansas City. The left fielder, uh, Renfro, made an excellent catch or excellent stop of the ball. He didn't let it go to the wall. And then he just turned and fired a strike to second base. And then Bobby Witt Jr. made a nice tag at second to get Rutschman. But the run did score. So now it's 3-2. to two. We head to the ninth inning. Ninth inning comes around. Ryan Malcastle, got to give him credit, four-pitch walk. Didn't, didn't chase... Had some pitches low and away, which he usually will chase, but he didn't. Kudos to him. So he got on. Anthony Santander gets a hit. They walked Austin Hayes. Colton Cowser came up. He got out. Um, well, they walked Austin Hayes after Jordan Westberg bunted, sacrificed himself to get it second and third with one out. They then walked Austin Hayes. Colton Cowser comes to the plate. Lefty on lefty, and he strikes out. Um, and then... James McCann comes to the plate with two uh, two outs, bases loaded, down a run, and he had two strikes on him. I think it was an 0-2 count or a 1-2 count, and he lined to base hit the left field, and Cedric Mullins had pinch hit, uh, pinch ran for Santander, so he had speed on the bases. Mountcastle scored, Mullins scored, and the Orioles pulled it out. They get the win, 4-3 to three in nine innings, a long, long day, so it's really nice for the fans that stuck it out to be rewarded with a comeback victory, a walk-off win like that again. So the O's 4-2 and two start the season. Um, you know, they won both series against teams they should win series against. They should beat Anaheim, not a very good team, and Kansas City is not a very good team. 
They won 56 games last year. So they're 4-2. They have off on Thursday. They're heading into Pittsburgh and then Boston. Again, two more series, even though they're on the road, that they should do well in. So we will see. But there you go. 4-3, the Orioles get the win. 4-2 record now. Hopefully the bats will start heating up a little bit more. Um, but they're staying in games. The pitching is keep them in, keeping them in these games, and it's been awesome. Guys, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you like what you see. We do talk, we talk Orioles baseball all the time. We do uh, other Major League Baseball stuff. So be sure to like and subscribe to the video. It doesn't cost you anything, and it really helps out the channel. But until next time, keep rooting for those O's. Take care of yourselves and each other, and we'll talk to you soon.